When driving down a highway, have you ever found yourself wondering about the area you're driving through? Author Stu Magnuson is one such person, and he's turned his curiosity into a book. I wanted to write about Highway 83 because my dad grew up alongside it. My grandparents lived their whole lives in Stapleton, Nebraska. And my grandmother, whenever I would like uh, borrow a bicycle to go ride out to the South Loop River, she would always call out after me, be careful, that highway runs from Canada to Mexico. And as a 12 year old, I'm thinking, wow, that's really interesting. US Highway 83 is among the longest highways in the United States and it runs through the middle of Nebraska. I wanted to write this book as kind of a hybrid travel history book. It would be my experience traveling the highway and then I come across interesting historical vignette, uh, one of these roadside signs, and then I would take that and turn it into a, a chapter that is a piece of American history. It would be the lack of a historical marker that would set Magnuson on an unexpected journey. I always kind of wondered, why isn't there a historical marker for DeWitty Brownlee, which is the longest, most successful African-American settlement, rural settlement in Nebraska. South of Valentine, and only a few miles off Highway 83, today, Brownlee has a population of about 15 people. Organized in 1887, it was a thriving town of white settlers. When the Kincaid Act of 1904 went into effect, the town not only grew, it became a harmonious biracial community as blacks settled along the Loop River. I wanted to come to this area, to Brownlee, to Whitty, because this is my dad's home. He was born in Overton, and from the time he was 10 years old, grew up here in DeWitty. He talked about it all the time. So I grew up thinking I knew a place that I'd never been. This is my first trip here. And I think it's everything that he said it was. Catherine's father, William, was the youngest child of Charles and Esther Meehan a biracial couple who emigrated from Canada in 1885 to live in Nebraska. Grandpa wanted land, and I think all of the homesteaders who came wanted land. Some of them had land in Canada, but they were very small portions. They lived in areas that were not large farming homesteads. They were probably what today we would call town. I think my grandfather, though, wanted an opportunity to be able to give more to his family than he had in Canada. And Nebraska, I think, just suited him. It was that opportunity. After the Kincaid Act opened land in Cherry County, the Meehans, along with several other black families, began settling along a 14-mile stretch of the North Loop River in 1906. They called their settlement DeWitty. In all of the stories that Dad told, he seldom talked about any discrimination here. One of the things that he typically said about DeWitty, um, about Nebraska in, in general, but DeWitty specifically, was people were people. Your neighbors were your neighbors. And I can just hear him saying that. I think realistically, there probably were differences that were difficult for people to overcome on both sides. But the impression I got is that people realized that there are not many of us out here, black or white, and we need to figure out how to get along because we never know when we're gonna need one another. When race riots were happening in cities across the United States, including Omaha, the black and white people in the communities of DeWitty and Brownlee live together in peace. You have the story of an interracial couple. You have uh, integrated one-room schoolhouses. You have the two communities coming together on the 4th of July to celebrate this very quintessential American holiday. And they played baseball games and had a little rodeo and a picnic and so on. And this is what you find in the historical record. The memoirs you read of the settlers just mention all these things. They don't mention anything else. 
By 1910, there were 82 residents in the Dewitty settlement, and over the years, numbers may have reached as high as 150. At some point, Dewitty was renamed Audacious, and all continued to go well for at least a couple more decades. But then the Dust Bowl years began, and by 1936, the last resident of Dewitty moved away. It would take another 80 years for the unique history of Dewitty to be recognized. Why isn't there a marker here? Then I, uh, kind of towards the end of the research of the book, I started to get a hold of some of the descendants. And I said, you know what, I'm just gonna look into this. With a little research and crowdfunding, Stu and Catherine were able to get a historical marker for Dewitty. And on a cool April morning, a formal dedication was held along Highway 83. I never lived in Nebraska, and I never visited Cherry County before, but I grew up with the names Dewitty and Audacious constantly in my ear. My dad, William Meehan, seemed to carry Nebraska with him. In so many ways, this feels like coming home. I heard my father and cousins comment that there was no prejudice out here. The people were just na people, and neighbors were neighbors. How about that? An immediate kinship formed between some 200 people as they gathered on the remote Nebraska highway, crossing color lines and collapsing time. It's heartwarming. I think that the ancestors would be really, really pleased, very happy to know that this many years later, you know, a century later, they're still remembered. And of course, no Nebraska hometown welcome is complete without a potluck. I only thought that it would be more the people who are directly connected to the actual people who lived here. And I didn't think that there was going to be such a large response from the community itself. Yes, this has just been a phenomenal experience. So this is my first time here, and we've both been uh, just pleasantly surprised at how friendly the people are. That's what's just actually blown us away, is that everyone has just reached out and embraced us of all races. I mean, the majority of people that have been here are actually uh, Brown Lee descendants, and they embrace the DeWitty descendants just like they were family. And coming back here and seeing the way that my ancestors were, were taken in by the, the other homesteaders, I think that really does take heart because it, it shows that we have come a long way. That we, our family made it out here and built a town and, and were educated. It's very humbling and really it gives you perspective of how difficult it was and how much they achieved. I'm not surprised. A hopeful message is here. And Lord, in our times, you know, uh, we are, we're having trouble as a society holding together. And so this is just a little, a little glimmer, a little ray, you know, that we, we can live together. There's evidence that I had a good time. <laughs> if good things come in small packages, then maybe what started in two little Nebraska communities, between people who found they had more in common than not, can serve to remind us of what is possible. <laughs>